Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Model Building. In this series, I'm working on reproducing a set of locomotives I saw on the front of a Southern Pacific freight train in 1993. In this episode, I'm going to continue working on my HO scale model of Conrail SD40-6283. Last time I made some modifications to the pilots and coupler mounts. I also created a barrier to keep light from shining through the fan openings on top of the model. My goals for this time are to create a custom speaker enclosure, determine the speaker placement, and install fiber optics for the rear headlights. I want to build on the simple barrier that I made in the last episode to create a custom speaker enclosure. The speaker is going to be located in the radiator fan area. I'll start by measuring the height of the cast metal near the rear gear tower on the chassis. It reads about 3 and 3 quarter scale feet, but I have to add a foot to that since on this ruler 0 is a scale foot in from the end. It's really 4 and 3 quarters. Now I need to measure the distance from the bottom of the barrier to the underside of the sill where it rests on top of the chassis. It reads 7.5 scale feet, but again I have to add a foot so it's really 8.5. 8.5 minus 4 and 3 quarters is 3 and 3 quarters. This means that the maximum depth of my speaker enclosure is 3 and 3 quarters scale feet. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to reduce that to 3.5 feet, which should leave a quarter foot for clearance. I could grind down the chassis for additional clearance, but I don't think that'll be necessary. I'm going to cut a bulkhead 3.5 scale feet tall for my speaker enclosure from the same strip of styrene that I used to make the barrier. For the best sound, I like to make my speaker enclosures as big as possible. For that reason, I prefer to make my own enclosures to maximize the use of the available space rather than use commercial ones. My speaker enclosures also do double duty, supporting wires and fiber optic strands. This is a Loksound Select decoder. I'll be using a Loksound 5 in this engine, but the Select is a good stand-in for planning purposes since it's more or less the same size. The decoder will be mounted somewhere in this area. The plastic frame that holds the motor sticks up a little higher than the cast metal frame over the rear truck. I could cut the motor frame, but I don't think it'll be necessary. I'll mark a location a little behind the motor frame. This will still make for a nice size speaker enclosure. Before I glue the bulkhead in place, I'll need to drill some holes. I'll need two holes for the rear headlight fiber optic strands, four holes for the rear number board and marker light wires, and two holes for the speaker wires. I'm using a number 67 drill bit, which will make a hole big enough for 030 fiber optic strands. This isn't the neatest hole pattern. Thankfully, it'll be invisible inside the locomotive. Now I can tack glue the bulkhead inside the shell with some liquid styrene cement. When I'm happy with the placement, I can use some more glue to make the bond permanent. For a little extra support, I'll cut two pieces of 040 square strip styrene to the same height as the bulkhead. The exact size of the styrene strips isn't important as long as the height matches the bulkhead. I'll glue one on each side. This will also help to seal any gaps around the edges. This is one of my favorite speakers for ESU decoders. It's a 4 ohm, 1 watt, 35 millimeter by 16 millimeter rectangular speaker. ESU decoders work really well with the 4 ohm load, though the 5 series can handle a load anywhere between 4 and 32 ohms. I need to figure out where the speaker will be located and devise a speaker mount. The speaker could go anywhere behind the bulkhead that I just installed. Because of the rear number boards and marker lights, I want to give myself some space to work with, so I'll mount the speaker as far forward as I can. I often put my speakers facing down so that the sound exits through the bottom of the locomotive. I find this gives a better bass response and better overall sound quality. The speaker should be mounted at the same level as the bottom of the bulkhead. The flanges around the speaker are a little less than 3 quarters of a scale foot thick. Since my bulkhead is 3.5 scale feet high, I'll need to cut some speaker supports that are 2 and 3 quarters scale feet high. I'll use some HO scale 6x10 styrene strip for this because I have some handy. The exact dimensions don't really matter, the pieces just have to be thick enough to support the speaker. I'll need to make four of these. Two of them go inside the front bulkhead in the corners. Now I'll mark where the other end of the speaker stops. I'll glue the other two supports to that end. Now the speaker will sit in the right place. There are still some gaps around the sides. It looks like some more 040 square strip will fill this in. I'll cut two pieces the same length as the speaker. Then I'll glue one strip to either side over the speaker mounts. Now the speaker is enclosed everywhere but in the back. Before I fill that in and actually install the speaker, I'll need to take care of all the rear end lighting. I like to start with the stuff that's highest in the shell first and work my way down. For the rear headlights, I'll be using 030 fiber optic strands. This package is from BL Hobby Products, but you can get .030 or .75 millimeter if you prefer fiber optic strands from a variety of sources. After taking it out of the package, the fiber optic material is usually wound in a loose circle like this. 
Take a look at the end. See how this one is frosted? I'm going to cut that part off before using it so that I have a clean piece. Any little cracks or breaks inside the strand will reduce the amount of light that gets through. A heat source like a lighter can be used to make a lens on the end of the strand. This can take a little practice. The lens should be round when viewed from the end and shaped like a football when viewed from the side. Ideally, the lens will be just the right size for an HO scale headlight casting. I make lenses until I get two that match in size for dual headlights. These are a little curled up, but I've cut the strands with the lenses to be longer than my speaker enclosure. Before installing the lenses, I'll use some silver paint on the back. This is to simulate the chrome reflector behind a real headlight. Once the paint is dry, I can feed the strands through the headlight casting one at a time. I'm routing each strand through the middle set of holes in the bulkhead. It's hard to see, but there's already some support behind the headlight casting in this model to keep the strands from wiggling around too much. It's important to have something like this to keep the lenses aimed straight down the track and not at some weird angle. I'll talk more about how to construct supports for lights when it comes time to do the same type of setup in the other models in this series. As you can see, the fiber optic strands are already catching some light from my photo lamps. Once I hook them up to an LED, they'll look really good. In the next episode, I'll continue to work on the speaker enclosure and lighting. When adding a speaker or electronics to a model, be sure to take careful measurements so that the pieces you're adding won't interfere with the mechanism. Generally, larger speaker enclosures give better sound, so it's worth it to maximize the size of the speaker enclosure inside the model. It pays to give the placement of speakers, decoders, and lights careful consideration so that the available space inside the locomotive is used efficiently. I think I made some pretty good progress in this episode, and we'll pick it up again next time.